Hey guys, let's talk about CPU speeds. So in last few years, Intel has been working towards not necessarily much faster CPUs, but cooler running CPUs, meaning that their temperature, they don't get as hot when they're running fast. And when I looked at that initially, I just said to myself, okay, that's for laptops, I suppose. And it's also for uh, less energy consumption, again, for laptops as well. And I just thought of it as, again, a way for them to be able to run the laptops cooler, save energy so the batteries in the laptops could last longer. But upon further investigation, I discovered that there is more to it than that. So what it comes down to is that when you have a cooler running CPU, the CPU can sustain higher clock speeds, meaning it could rev up much longer, much faster for longer. And it's kind of like a, a car engine. If you have a car engine that is very, is very efficient, you can push it in terms of its RPM, and it can rev much higher, much longer without damaging the engine. Same thing with CPUs in a sense where the more efficient and the cooler running processors can sustain high uh, gigahertz or whatever, megahertz or whatever it is, gigahertz, I guess, uh, speeds. So when you have a processor that can, uh, you know, overclock to three, three gigahertz, for instance, if it's cooler running, it can maintain that three gigahertz overclocking for much longer because it just stays cool. Because when the super CPU gets hot, the fans have to count, come on, which makes the laptops louder. So the fans come on. And then if the fans can't keep the CPU cool, the uh, processor will downclock. It will start to slow itself down. It'll go from three, from 3 gigahertz to 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, and so forth. So when I was uh, looking at the uh, current crop of uh, CPUs coming out of Intel, specifically I was looking at the new MacBooks, the 2016s, the 2015s, and there was a lot of disappointment, not just with the Macs, with the new Dells, the new Microsofts, and so forth. And they saw that in terms of the artificial benchmarks, they run the laptops through these benchmarks and they get these scores. As far as I can understand, the reason you have very similar, well, not as far as I can understand, the reason you have very similar scores is because Intel has been working not on necessarily making the chips faster in terms of the gigahertz. What they've been working on is making them cooler. And this cooling will have an impact in terms of overall speed with real world application. So what does that mean is that, let's give you a scenario that I'm looking at. Let's say you're doing video editing and you're starting to process the video. The uh, fourth generation, I think they're called Haswell chips from Intel, they clock at pretty much the same speed as the sixth generation, uh, I think it's Skylake or whatever, whatever the name is, the sixth generation Intel CPU. So even though they're both going about whatever, 2.5 gigahertz versus 2.4 for the older one, and they're about the same speed, what happens is that the older generation gets hotter faster. So what happens, it gets hotter faster. So as it's running, it's maxed out, it's maxed out, it's maxed out, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. It has to start slowing down because it does, you don't want to burn the chip. So as it's slowing down because it's getting hotter and too hot, and it's starting to down clock, the newer generation is staying cool much longer, so it's able to keep performing. So in the beginning, the, two, the older chip and the newer chip are going about the same speed, but as things progress in terms of how long the chips are running at high capacity, the older chips have to slow down, but the newer chips don't. So the newer chips are staying high, highly performant for much, much longer. So this leads to what I was seeing in a lot of these benchmarks with real world use of the 2016 Mac Pro, which is used as a much cooler running CPU than the, the 2015 models. You saw that with the real world benchmark, you saw that the new chips are actually running, uh, processing or resulting in getting work done significantly faster, sometimes 30, 40, 50% faster, sometimes 20% faster. But meanwhile, in the synthetic benchmark, you saw that a lot of times they were neck and neck or barely any difference. Well, that's because the benchmarks were very, sh they weren't real world use 
are, they weren't reflecting real world use in that the benchmarks, I'm guessing, are running for short periods of time. So it doesn't give, doesn't give the two chips to differentiate themselves in terms of cooling. So that's where the cooling is actually much more important than I had originally considered. Cooler chips will, in real world use, especially if you're doing heavy work, will result in far more performant computers. Again, this is in the type of work that you do. If you're just running processors and so forth, uh, excuse me, spreadsheets, and you're doing, you're writing, writing articles, you probably won't see much of a difference at all. But if you're running video and you're doing video editing, or maybe you're running heavy duty spreadsheets and you're doing database works, you're writing VMs and you're really pushing your CPU over a consistent period of time, then you'll see that the newer generations of the Intel chips are gonna really come through in the fact that they're, uh, they're much cooler. And besides the fact that they use less energy so that you get, batteries, you get longer battery life and so on. So something to consider, cooling of the chips is actually very important for long-term performance in your computers, besides the other advantages of you know, longer lasting batteries and so on. All right, that's it. I hope you found this useful. Bye-bye.